Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how you can create terrain elevation assets and make them blend together. This is the method I've used to quickly create the different environment for my make animation short promoting my new animation course in Blender Alive. If you want to learn how to animate those badass robots, just check the link in the description below and discover my course. With Blender open, let's get rid of everything by pressing A to select all and X to delete. I will press Shift A and add a plane, go into edit mode and scale it up. This is going to be our base ground mesh. Our goal will be to create dunes that will blend with the ground mesh. So I will add a new plane. I will scale it up and press Ctrl A to apply the scale. This is going to be our dune mesh. To be able to deform it, we need to increase its resolution. Press Tab to enter edit mode, select everything with A and then right click and choose subdivide. When you use a function, you will have a contextual menu in the bottom left corner of Blender. Expose it and increase the number of subdivision to 10. Then right click again and subdivide it a couple of additional time. To edit our mesh, I will select one of the vertex in the middle of the plane. Then I will enable the editing falloff. Then in the 3D viewport, I will press G and Z to pull up the vertex. And using the mouse wheel, I can increase the size of the falloff. In object mode, I will right click to shade this smooth. We can now create a base material that will be used on this shape and on the ground. It is automatically assigned to our shape. I will now select the ground, both into my material library and assign the same material. I will give it a dark gray color. I will then go lower in the tab of our material properties, go to viewport display and also set a dark gray color here. It's a matter of preview, it has no influence on the material itself. I will switch the viewport shading to material preview and since both objects are aligned and have the same material, they already blend together. But as soon as I move the dune lower or I make it bigger, they don't blend that well anymore. And this is because the light doesn't bounce the same way on our plane and on our dune shape. And our goal will be to make the light bounce on the dune as it bounces on the plane. We will need a vertex group. So I will enter edit mode on my dune object. I will select all the vertices, go to vertex group, press the plus icon to create a new group and assign all the vertices to this group with a maximum influence of one. So the idea is to simply transfer our normals behavior from the plane onto our dune object. We can easily do this by adding a modifier to our dune object. And since we want to transfer the normals from our plane to the dune, we will use the data transfer modifier. The source will be our ground plane, so I will click the eyedropper and select the plane. And to influence our normals, we need to enable face corner data and click custom normals. We are prompt to enable auto smooth in the object data properties, so we will go to those properties and under normals, enable auto smooth. And now our dune is totally blending with the plane. It seems like it has no shading. If I switch to a matcap showing the normals of our objects, they now all appear the same, meaning that their normals have the same orientation and the light will bounce the same way on the plane than on the dune. So we need to limit this blending to the base of the dune. To do so, we will add a new modifier to our dune object that is called vertex weight proximity. This will allow us to play on the vertex group we have selected and use this result to drive the influence of the first modifier. So we need to source the vertex group in this new modifier, but also in the previous one. Now back on editing our new modifier, we need to source a target to define the altitude or the area of blending. So I will source the ground object. 
and instead of using the proximity mode to object that will use the distance between the different origin points, I want to use the geometry of our object and switch to face mode. Now to better show you what all of this is about, I will enter edit mode. I will enable the display of the modifier in edit mode. I will switch back my shading mode to studio and then I will go into the overlays option and enable vertex group weight. Better see the vertex group influence. I will go back into the shading option, switch to flat shading and the color to object. Now you can see a gradient in our vertex group while we have assigned all the vertices to this vertex group. And this is caused by the vertex weight proximity modifier. Progressively remove any weight that is below one meter between our ground plane and our object. If we now expose the influence option of this modifier, we can invert the vertex group influence by clicking next to fall off the double sided arrow. Now you can play with the lowest and highest value. Those value will indicate the distance range between the beginning of the influence of the modifier and the end of the influence of the modifier. So now to be able to see the effect on our object, I will switch back to material preview mode and we need to move the modifier on top of the stack so that the vertex group is modified and then we use the data transfer modifier. From there you can duplicate, move, difference, dune, even scale them and they will still blend with our plane. Just duplicate the dune and scatter it upon your plane as you wish. We can now open the shader editor and look at our object material. To illustrate the blending between the different objects, I will add a texture, noise texture. When it comes to material editing, the Node Wrangler add-on is a must-have. So go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Wrangler and enable it. Back onto our material with our noise texture added, we can control shift left click it to preview it. To be able to contrast our noise texture, I will add a converter color ramp and I will plug it in between. I will then plug its color in the color of the principal BSDF. Then I will left click the noise texture node to select it and press control T by default, our texture are using generated coordinate and it doesn't blend very well. We can try with UV coordinates, but the result won't be that much different. To get an homogeneous projection, we need to switch to object coordinates. Now the scale will be homogeneous over the different objects of our scene that share the same material. We will use an object to drive those coordinates. So in the 3D viewport, I will press Shift A and add an empty object. It's currently pretty small as my scene is pretty big. And I will give it a name. I will call it empty TXT for texture. Now I will select back my ground plane and in the texture coordinate in object, I will select our empty texture object. Now, if I move scale or rotate this empty object, we can see the texture sliding. I will make the noise pattern bigger by decreasing its scale on the noise node. Now, if I rotate around my object, you will see that the texture is currently seamlessly blending between the different objects. By using the object coordinates, all of our objects are using the same texture coordinates for their mapping, and they are blending their normals through the modifiers. From there, we can light our scene with an HGRI, for example. So I will switch to Word and on the background node, I will press Ctrl T and I will open an HDRI texture. You will find the best free HDRI texture on Poly Heaven, which used to be HDRI Heaven. Then you can switch to rendered view mode. From there, you can download a couple of texture set for PBR material, whether on Poly Heaven or Polygon, for example. Then in the shader editor, switch back to object. Then select your principal BSDF node and press Ctrl Shift T. This will automatically open your browser and Blender will ask you to select the color map, the normal map and the specularity or roughness map. 
by default, the texture setup will use the UVs. We need to switch back to object and then source our empty texture object. Now those texture will be mapped with the same method as our noise texture. We do need to increase their scale by currently reducing the scale in the mapping node. A value of 0.05 should be okay depending on the scale of your current objects. From there, you can duplicate the whole principal BSDF texture setup and load another set of PBR textures. From there, to blend those two different materials, I will simply add a shader mix shader and I will use the noise texture we have previously created to mix those both together. Press Shift A, add the mix shader into the shader tab, then plug in the first principal BSDF in the first input and the second in the second one. And as a factor, you can use the noise texture. Now to be able to contrast our noise texture, I will add a converter color ramp and we'll plug in our noise texture and use the output as a factor for our mix shape. From there, you can play with the contrast of the noise texture using this color ramp so that you can choose whether to show one or the other of the texture. And the extra work I will do, it depends on the texture you are using, is that I will add an RGB curve between the diffuse color of one of my texture and the input of the principal BSDF, just to be able to slightly tweak its color so that both texture have more or less the same color and better blend together. This specific step really depends on the texture you are using. You may not need to do it. There are tons of ways to mix different textures together and this is not the point of this tutorial. But here you can see that both our texture and our geometry are blending together seamlessly. If you want to go further and blend object with your terrain, I advise you to have a look to the tutorial by Crompwell. It's more advanced, but what I've shown you was enough to currently create all the environment for this shot. Never forget that the important thing is the outcome, what will be seen through the camera and you don't need crazy terrain blending if you don't show the terrain in a close up. This is the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.